Hello guys, it's been Emmanuel once again. In the previous lesson, we learned how to insert data into our database. In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to fetch data from our database. Uh, so I'm going, to I'm going to remove this line of code we have here at the top because that was intended for tests. And then I'm going to navigate to the uh, functions.php file. So down here, I'm going to create another function. So the slash to write the comments here. So the, the, the essence of writing this comment is to help our IDE remind us of what a, a function is responsible for um, in, in our code whenever we're trying to use a function. So you can see that if we, I'm gonna hover on a couple of um, predefined functions or methods that we have here on the screen. So you can see here, it tells us that this method prepares an SQL statement for execution. You can see that if we hover on this one, you can see it says bind variable to a parameter statement as uh, parameters, bind um, variables to a prepared statement as parameters. And then on this other line, it says executes a query. And this other line, you can see it says close a prepared statement. And on this line, it says close a previously open database connection. So you can see that all of these comments helps us alert in, in fitting information to our IDE. So the IDE can help us uh, remind us of what these functions are meant for. So I'm going to always write comments like this in my in my code. If we go back to the index.php file and oh, let me press Ctrl Z to return back the function we created here, uh, we called here, and then you, you hover on this, you can see that it tells us that and this function creates a post. So it helps us um, um, remind us of what a function is made for. So it's always recommended that you write comments like these at the top of your code. This will help a lot to help you and others who are gonna be working um, in the same program you on, on, the, on the program a lot. So here I'm gonna create a function and this function should be responsible for fetching information from our database. Uh, it's getting all the posts we have in our database. So this is going to be called get posts. Uh, and for now, I, I we don't need this post to have any parameters at all. And then I, I'm going to give it a return value and I want the return value to be array. And uh, this is going to be, uh, we are expecting this um, function to return a list or uh, an array of all the posts we have in our database. And uh, now here in this line, I'm going to, include our database connection so we're going to be including our database connection here so I'm going to use the include keyword space and tell it where our database is so our database is in the lib folder uh, and it's called a database connection file it's called ph uh, connection.php and then down here I'm going to prepare an SQL uh, statement. I think I should scroll this down a little so you can see the code and then maybe increase the font size so you can see my code clearly. Uh, I hope you don't have difficulty seeing my code. Uh, and here I'm gonna create a, a statement variable here that should um, contain our statement. Uh, and then the connection variable prepare we want to prepare a statement so we want you to select all the columns we have in our post so we want you to select all the um, columns we have from uh, from the um, post table instead so select all the columns from the post table and here we don't need to bind any parameters because we have no variables to bind to the statement. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, execute the query. So here I'm going to execute the query. So stmt execute. Uh, now on this line, what I'm going to do here is this I am going to. Um, we're going to we're going to bind the result value here. So bind result um, values. 
Now, what, what are the result values? The, the result values are the values you are fetching from the database. So the columns, the information in the columns you're fetching from the database are what we call the result values. So we would need to bind them to variables so we can use the data later in our program. So what I'm going to do here is the STMT, which is a short form for statement, bind underscore result and I'm going to indent this so we can uh, just for readability. So we are going to feed it with all of the information we want. Uh, we're going to be fetching from our database. So we, we want the ID of um, each post. We want the the author of each post. So we're creating variables to store the author of the post. We are going to create a, a variable to store the title of every post we have. And then we're going to create another one to store the uh, contents of every post we have and then we can create another one to store the status of every post we we've got and then we're going to create another one to uh, store the dates the post was created and this should do so the the next thing um, i'm going to do down here is fetch the information so we're going to fetch the data from our database here and we can fetch the, the data. So here, uh, I'm going to use a while loop here because the data we're fetching is going to be more than one. So we're going to be using the while loop here. So while uh, the MT uh, fetches the data, so while it fetches the data, we would like you to do um, something down here. So we'd like you to do a couple of stuffs for us here. So I'm gonna go back to the top of my code here and then in the, uh, I'm gonna initialize an empty array here. Now, what should this array be? This array should be called posts. Why? Because uh, this array is gonna, this array is going to contain um, um, all of the, all the posts we're gonna be having uh, fetching from our database. And then inside the while loop here, I'm going to create another um, array again called post. This time around, this array is going to be an, an associative array. So I'm going to create an associative array here. So uh, this array is just going to contain a, a single post. This is going to represent a single post we are fetching from the database. So it's going to represent all the posts we are having in our database. So and then. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm making it an associative array because I want uh, the data to be labeled properly. Uh, we want something like a key and value pair, uh, unlike um, the number of values, keys, so the numbers, keys instead. So here the, the ID is going to be uh, ID. So you can see the information we have here. So the ID is going to be this ID we are um, the ID we're binding to this um, variable called ID, and then the the author is going to be the author is going to be this the value we have here. So whatever value we're binding to the the the, the value we're binding to that variable called author. So I'm going to do is to all of them. So uh, try to I too should be. Why do I keep um, refreshing the back space, uh, space bar key there? So the content is going to be content here. Uh, no, no, this is supposed to be title instead. So title and then content is going to be the variable called content and then the uh uh the the status is going to be uh, the variable called status and then the the last one so created on then just no space is going to be created on so you can see what we we've got here now now down 
down here what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pick every post we are fetching from the database and then put them inside push them inside the uh the posts array we got we, we initialized here at the top so i'm gonna push each post uh to posts so i'm gonna push every post to post so here we're going to be calling a bit in function called array underscore push so array push we want you to push some data into this variable and this is the data we want you to push into the variable so we want you to help us push these posts each post into the posts array now this is going to be the end of our function here so we are going to return the posts because we want to use the posts later in the index.hc and php file I don't I keep calling it HTML. <laughs> so here, don't forget to to close your um, connection uh, connection and statements. So don't forget to close your connection and statements. So st m st mt uh, close. So we want you to close and then connection please do close too so we want you um, close uh, so you can see here that we now have a, a function here that fetches all the data from our database if you um, get confused anywhere i'm going to uh, if you get confused anywhere you you, you can um, leave a comment in the section and in the um, comment section below and i'm going to uh, try to explain things much uh, easier for you to understand so here what we have here is um, a loop that's going to loop through the posts we are having so provided we have posts in our data to fetch in our database it's going to keep fetching the posts and then putting each of the data inside of this array and then uh, finally putting it inside of this big array here so we can uh, return them to whoever is calling them so here I'm going to remove this line of code we have here and I'm going to uh, write a different line of code here. So I'm going to create a new variable called posts and I'm going to be calling our function, our get posts function. So I want you to get all the posts we have. And then down here, I'm going to open a pre tag here and then start PHP and PHP. Don't mind me, I'm using the shorthand we or file putting stuff and that's why you ha i have the equal sign instead of php so instead of php here i'm just having this and everything's going to still going to work fine so i'm going to print r uh what i want to do is print uh the posts we are fetching from our database and uh, that's because we want to see uh, the post so the essence of having the pre tag here is so we can format the data properly so it looks good on uh when, when we view it on the browser so here i'm going to open up my my browser now and then try to assess the application so localhost slash php dash toot and now you can see that we have an array of all the data we fetched from our database so this this is an array of all the posts we have in our database uh, let's go back to our text editor and then maybe populate the data uh, on um, in, in HTML tags we are going to be having here. So, so I'm going to create an article, an article tag down here, and this article tag can be divided into into two. So you you can give them classes when you want to style them. So we're going to be styling them in a different. Um, in a different lesson we're going to be styling them so this this could be uh the the head of our post and the next the next tag this one is going to be the maybe the body of our post so this is the head of our post this is the body of our post so in here we're just going to um create a h3 tag and then this is going to contain the title uh, title of all posts 
uh, are going to be here and then maybe a paragraph here uh, to tell us who who made the post so posted by uh, maybe a bold tag an eye tag and then the name of the author is going to be here and then down here this is going to be um, the content of the post why do i keep starting php here so the content of the post is going to be here so what, what, what i'm going to do here is uh i'm just going to cut out this code because uh the essence of writing this is just so we can see what um, an, an example of what we're going to be displaying to the user so here uh, i'm going to start php here and php that's PHP here and PHP and the first one here I am going to create a for each loop so if you know PHP templating then that's a plus if you don't know PHP templating I'm going to teach you um, PHP templating in a different lesson so uh, for um, for each post as um, post uh, then we want you to end the for each loop here so here between the the start and the end php tags i'm going to um, paste in the html code we copied sooner so this is just going to give us um, uh, a certain amount of these tags depending on the number of posts we have so here i'm going to change this the, the, the title here and then here uh, in the title here we're going to be outputting whatever the title of the post is so it's post uh, title and then down here it should be start php and php post author and this should be start php and php post uh, contents so this should be post contents uh, so here we can also change this uh, we, we, we don't want this at all so we can just change this to a h1 tag here and this should be blog <laughs> so this maybe this is our blog page and then i'm going to comment out this line so I'm, I'm just leaving that line here because we will need it later so let's go back to our browser and then see what we've got here so i'm going to refresh the page by pressing f5 on my keyboard and then you can see that we have all the data uh, we need on the screen so thank you for watching this video if you like this video uh, if you really enjoyed the video please um, like the video like the video leave a comment in the section in the comment section below i'm going to answer every question if, if you have any questions or you uh, you encounter any problem and during the course or you can leave your questions down below and i'm going to answer every question you ask and you can also share this to friends if you um, think your friends should also watch these videos thank you for watching